Okay, hello everybody. Just trying to get my slides going here. All right, so here is uh, for one hour we're doing um, Simon Schuster Fall kids titles. Again, I probably won't get through the entire list, but we'll do what we can today. Um, I start off with the promotions we have available for the season. Uh, we're offering 50% discount on any uh, floor displays or carton packs. Um, often these displays are signed or come with easel backs, so they're a great deal. And just send your orders to me. Um, we also have available this season a box set promotion, which is good on all front list and back list titles. I did email out the promotion. If you didn't get it, let me know. And again, this is good on multiple orders up until December 10th. And it's just a, you'll have to, each order would be five units. So just keep track of that while we're uh, going through the front list titles. So we start off with our picture books. Um, I mentioned this briefly in the adult to session because it was on the carton pack promo. So if you want to order 20 copies, send your order to me and you'll get a 50% discount. Um, it, this is a book that's bound to be a huge classic for years to come award-winning brothers Terry and Eric Fan from here in Toronto. Um, this is a big award contender and it's about the importance of giving back and community and art is just absolutely stunning. Uh, we're also doing The Night Gardener, one of their previous titles now in trade paperback. This is a story that's loosely based on their father and it's about the importance of passing down wisdom through the um, ages. Log Driver's Waltz. This is coming into trade paperback as well. This is the iconic Canadian folk song and film. This is sort of a feminist retelling all about female independence and empowerment. Good one for um, Canadian holidays and also as a shower gift. Dragons Are the Worst. This is one of our lead picture books. It's 125,000 copy first print. This is your best-selling author of Unicorns Are the Worst, which we sold about 6,000 copies of in Canada. This is a fun story that subverts expectations. It's got a sparkly specked out package. Um, and it's basically about the importance of not judging others. And Gilbert the Goblin actually appears in each of the books. So there's that uh, popular character that runs throughout the stories that kids will like. We also have a six copy signed carton pack for the series, which as I said, 50% off if you're interested. Uh, Cat Dog, this is a literacy expert Mem Fox. This is a fun read aloud with a call and response structure. Um, also has uh, illustrations by the be beloved best-selling award-winning illustrator Mark T. Much of this story is actually told through its pictures. And again, for 50% off, we've got a six copy signed solid counter display. Buffy McWhiskers is possibly my favorite of the season. Uh, this is a Canadian author now living in the US. Uh, it's a 75,000 copy first print. Uh, this is a fluffy kitten that is so cute. Anyone who looks at her explodes. So this is um, ideal for fans of uh, Love Monster or Nobody Hugs a Cactus. Uh, it's a story about found friendship and accepting ourselves to who we are. Uh, Michael Ian Black is back again with the fourth in his best-selling series with uh, illustrations by Canadian Debbie Ohi. Um, of course, these deal with emotions, which are very popular in uh, schools and libraries. This is a flamingo and a very sorry potato learning how to fix hurt feelings, how to apologize, and how to really mean it. And we're doing I'm Worried Now in Trade Paperback. So this, of course, is the story that deals with um, anxiety and how to cope. Trees is absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is a lyrical celebration of trees by an award-winning author of over 100 kids books. Um, and a established fine artist has done the illustrations and she's actually done the paintings directly on wood to give it even more of a connection to trees. Trees are having a moment right now um, for climate change initiatives. As I said, the illustrations in person are just like luminescent, like the, the screen is not even doing these justice, even though they're still gorgeous. 
a dear little one. This is a 50,000 copy first print. Um, this is a book that's likely to win awards. It's a magical look at nature through the eyes of a child. It's uh, very reassuring and poetic. Uh, we've had previous books by this author that have done really, really well. These are great gifts. Uh, you might recall If I Had a Little Dream. Uh, this is what the, um, the cover looks like underneath the flap jacket. So it has all that gold detailing, it has a very classic feel. <coughs> Excuse me. When Langston Dances, this is a 25,000 copy first print. Uh, this is about a young black boy who dreams of dancing. This is a story about self-love and self-esteem and about uh, pursuing your dreams. So this is a black boy joy, which is what people are looking for more of representation in the stores. Gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations again. Twisty Turney House. This is a 50,000 copy first print. This is your popular author of Strictly No Elephants. Um, it also has the illustrator from John Oliver's Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo. And this is sort of a funny, sweet story that deals with prejudices and misconceptions. The Barking Ballad. This is based on a poem by Oliver Goldsmith. This is a fun interactive story uh, with very uh, folk style art illustration. So each time you see the red dot, you're supposed to bark like a dog. And every time you see the yellow diamond, you meow like a cat. Bulldozer's Christmas Dig. Uh, this is the third in this series. Uh, this is a uh, celebrating Christmas at the construction site. Uh, and Bulldozer are trying to figure out what to get his friends for Christmas. So this is a story about being creative and also has a recycling theme. It's actually a fun read aloud with all the different uh, sound effects. Step by Step is a 25,000 copy first print. This has got a Caldecott Honor illustrator, um, Diane Good. Uh, this is a relatable growing up story about starting school, making new friends, learning how to swing. Uh, across the street, etc. It's a very reassuring read again for kids who tend to be anxious and it does feature a diverse classroom. Beautifully Me, I think this will be a bestseller, even potentially an award winner for us. It's a hundred thousand copy first print. Um, the author is a YouTube Instagram sensation and a body positive activist and this is an important book about learning to love yourself just as you are and it's also a great book for caregivers and all about the subtle messages that they um, they send to people about their bodies. So I think this is just going to be a really important book. And again, the, the cover is going to have all kinds of sparkles and foil, and it's going to really pop off the shelf. Um, have you seen Gordon? Um, I actually love this book. This is a Canadian who's now living in New York. Um, this is sort of a funny take on the Where's Waldo books, but it does have a full story that runs throughout the pages. And it's just about a, uh, an aardvark who's really bad at hiding. So lots of details in the illustrations. Also has a very subtle message about consent in here as well. Uh, Gideon Kvetch, this is a 30,000 copy first print. This is a funny sweet story about opposites and uh, attracting friendship. This is full of Yiddish humor. It even has a glossary at the back of the book and it has um, a perspective about seeing things differently from different eyes. Angelina and Alice is a refreshed classic. This is a 100,000 copy first print and it's a story about friendship, jealousy and just trying your best. These are always so pretty. They again, make just lovely gifts. <coughs> uh, Parker Shines On, this is a 50,000 copy first print. This is um, the best-selling team that brought you Parker Looks Up. It got kind, all kinds of publicity. This is about making a new friend and learning self-expression. Um, it does have a dance theme and there's an introduction by, or an afterword by Misty Copeland. And it is black author. Santa Mouse, Where Are You is a 50,000 copy first print. This is the follow-up to last year's uh, sleeper hit. Um, this is all about Santa's littlest helper. 
It has a very nostalgic retro feel to it. Very sweet. Uh, keep your head up. This is like an Alexander and the Terrible No Good Bad Day for Black Boys. So again, I love the illustration style and it's all about managing your emotions. Thankful is another one of my favorites on the list. Um, I think it's a very sweet story coming out for Thanksgiving, all about the many things we have to be grateful for in life. But it's this super cool paper diorama art that I love. Carla and the Christmas Cornbread is a 75,000 copy first print. Um, claim to fame here is Carla Hall, who's the popular uh, sh superstar chef and TV host. So this is a story based on her own childhood. Um, it's about uh, making mistakes and learning how to set things right. And of course, filled with family traditions and does feature a black Santa Claus, which is a nice twist as well for better representation. We give thanks. This is Cynthia Ryland. So legendary author, again, sweet rhyming story for Thanksgiving, all about thankfulness, gratitude and friendship. Also promotes mindfulness and slowing down. Um, and then Cynthia Ryland's um, ongoing series. These are sort of longer stories. Um, this is a collection of three short stories in one book. They've all gotten actually very strong review attention. They have a very uh, sort of Richard Scarry feel to them. And they're basically about friendship and teamwork and helping each other out. Jazz for Lunch, this is a 25,000 copy first print. Uh, this is like a uh, last stop on Market Street with a jazzy twist. It's filled with fun jazz puns and it has a very energetic style. So again, it's a great read aloud. <coughs> Uh, room for everyone. I wish I had interiors to show you for this one, but I don't. Um, I have seen it though, and I think it's gorgeous. Um, so this is set in Zanzibar. It's a very energetic, rhythmic story, but inclus inclusivity, sharing, and empathy. Um, it also has a counting element to it, but it is a perfect book for our times. Good night, good night. This is actually an expanded version of the classic board book for which we've sold 6 million copies to date. So again, this is a perfect gift or keepsake of the classic Sandra Boyton. Oh, I got illustrations. Um, Patricia Polacco is back. So again, she tends to write um, longer stories, but she's always strongly reviewed and beloved by teachers and librarians. This is a, a warm hearted story about sibling rivalry and growing up growing pains and finding your first love. Uh, the first Christmas, so of course, this is a um, biblical retelling. This is um, has the lyrics of Little, Little Town of Bethlehem and then illustrations by classic painter Will Moses. Sort of a folk art style as well. The Welcome Chair, uh, this is a 50,000 copy first print, illustrations by Jerry Pinckney, who's an um, award-winning illustrator. This is an intergenerational family story about a handmade chair that's passed down through the years, including to an immigrant family. So it is, of course, just all about welcoming everyone and helping out when, you're, when it's needed. Uh, we have lots of Tommy DePola on the list this season. Of course, he passed away last year. Uh, Christina's Carol was the picture book he was working on when he died. Uh, it is based on a, a Carol by Christina Rossetti. Gorgeous illustrations. His Christmas books tend to do the best. Uh, Cat on the Dovro Phil is um, a classic that we've, we're reissuing. It's based on a Norwegian fairy tale, and it's a story about mistaken identities and a Christmas miracle. Uh, Jingle the Christmas Clown is another classic that we've refreshed. This is a Christmas story about selflessness, empathy, and the beauty of spreading joy. 
Um, it does include a recipe for cookies at the back of the book. Guess Who's Coming to Santa's for Dinner is Coming into Trade Paperback. This was first published in 2004, and this is all about the craziness of families over the holiday season. And the story of the Three Wise Kings was first published in 1983. This is also in trade paperback, a biblical story retelling. Um, this has been out um, for years now. We're just doing this in a really affordable, small format. Um, so it's a value price classic, really gorgeous illustrations again, great specs, perfect stocking stuffer. And Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch, we're also doing in a value-priced hardcover coming out for Valentine's Day. This is one of my favorite backlist titles on the Simon Schuster list. So, <clears throat> excuse me, but a lonely man who receives a mysterious gift and realizes he might not be as alone as he thought. It's super sweet. My name is Banna. This is a 30,000 copy first print. This is a picture book biography by the seven-year-old Syrian girl whose messages have turned her into a global symbol an advocate for refugee rights. So again, just a very sweet, inspirational story. She's sort of being hailed as this year as Anne Frank. Animal Architects is a 25,000 copy first print. This is by a bookseller from Malaprops in North Carolina. Um, this is good for STEM and STEAM curriculum. This is full of information about animal behavior and habitats around the world. It covers sea creatures, insects, um, and it also reads like a guessing game. Um, encourages kids to observe. The illustrator works for Pixar. Uh, Sister Creators Words and Shapes is Jeanette Winter. Again, she always gets strong review attention, um, often starred reviews. This is the story of a nun educator activist who became a celebrated pop artist who created prints um, that advocated for peace, love, and social justice. Um, then with her son, she's written The Little Owl and the Big Tree, which is the true story about the owl that was found in New York's Rockefeller um, Center of Tree and how they relocated this poor owl. So this became a big news story at the time. Uh, the Great Stink is a 40,000 copy first print. And I love the illustration style here. This is the fun true story about London's pollution problem and the creation of the first sewer system. So again, this has a timely message about hygiene and health. The Dinosaur Named Ruth is a 30,000 copy first print. This is the true story about a girl who discovered dinosaur bones in her backyard. So it's about a woman in STEM. It's a story about perseverance. She waited years before anyone would give her the time of day to take a look at these bones that she had found. But finally, they did come and say, oh, my God, this is the discovery of the century. Uh, Michael Emberley, again, he's an award winning author. Um, this is a look at how text messages are sent around the world. So again, this is for STEM and STEAM content. So everything from brain signals to code to fiber optics. It's a little wordy, just be warned. So it's for a slightly older child. Um, Earmuffs for Everyone, I love Megan McCarthy. She does nonfiction and makes them so entertaining. Um, again, great illustration style. So this is a uh, about Chester Greenwood who uh, invented earmuffs. He had over a hundred other patents as well. Very entertaining read. Uh, we're now into board books. So this is straightforward. This of course has uh, LGBTQ content, promotes activism as well. Uh, Karen Katz is back again. This has lift the flaps and a mylar mirror at the back. These are perennial sellers for us whenever they show up. You Are Home is uh, really pretty. This is a story about unconditional love. So it's a perfect shower gift. My Heart Grows has a die-cut heart that gets bigger on each spread to show how a parent's love grows. 
So this is great for Valentine, Mother's Day, or any day. Dear Santa is, um, this is the follow-up to Be Mine Porcupine, which we did really well with. Um, this has got sliding tabs. So it has a very sort of um, jolly postman kind of style. So you would pull out the tabs and little letters um, are revealed. <coughs> they don't actually remove from the book though. They're solidly in there. But I'm very scratchy throated now. <clears throat> Uh, you Complete Me Again has sliding pull tabs. This is a charming ode to things that belong together like salt and pepper. It is the concept of pears and is also a good one for Valentine's Day. This is the second in this series, which is a celebration of the season. So it's all about the things we do during the winter season like sledding and skating and snowman building. Uh, this is a lap edition of the classic dinosaur dance. Uh, box set. Remember that this would be available on the box set promotion. So this has got uh, these three. And they're, sorry, I should mention that the lap editions, not the board books. Uh, so Santa Mouse, this, as I said, was the sleeper hit of last year. We're now doing a board book version. Very retro look. Now we're into the Quicks books. So again, I don't have to go into detail about these, but these are the books that are all for kids emerging from picture books into chapter book format. Um, the Elf Academy is a new series in this format, all about the merry misadventures of a uh, North Pole elf. Otherwise, I think all of these series have been around. They're doing quite nicely. Um, our principal, I think, is probably the, the best-selling series in this format. Some box sets. Um, after that, we get into um, our graphic novel books for the ages five to eight. Uh, so Mist Meal Mayhem is the start of a new series. Jarrett Lerner is best known for his best-selling engineered series. Um, this is a bean, a chip, a tomato, and a stuffed of celery um, ready to save the world on their uh, taco hovercraft. So super cute. And then of course, these are the series that have been out previously, full color graphic, we've got two new dragon kingdoms and a box set, two new pup detectives and a box set, two new super turbos and you guessed it, a box set. Um, then we're into our traditional chapter books. These are the digest formats, heavily illustrated. Um, again, these are pretty straightforward, so you don't need me to tell you all about them. You can check to see which series you've been doing. Heidi is our longest running. That's book 33. If you haven't tried Itty Bitty Princess Kitty, I would recommend them. They've been selling really nicely. This is actually an older series that they just brought back in a box set version. So this is uh, two siblings who travel the world solving mysteries. These are all known quantities here. Um, Cranky Chicken is a lead title. Um, Catherine Battersby is a Canadian author. This again is a, a full color graphic or highly illustrated book all but a cranky ch chicken and a super um, upbeat worm <laughs> and how they become friends. So it's super sweet, love it. And she'll be doing some publicity for us. Um, Night Frights is a new series. This is ideal for ages seven to 10. These are um, only slightly spooky. There's more silly than anything. Coming out of course in time for Halloween. Um, a reminder with all these books, I should have mentioned it way earlier, but I only am showing the paper books in this slide um, presentation, but if there's a hardcover available for library accounts, it comes immediately after in your digital links.
the pug series is also new. Um, this is for ages seven to 10 as well, highly illustrated. And this is a, a surprisingly layered story about family and belonging. And then one with a seasonal approach. Pizzazz versus Perfecto just started this summer. These have been huge bestsellers in the UK. This is the ongoing adventures of a reluctant superhero, heavily illustrated. Uh, they're making a movie out of Goddess Girls. This one is a bind up. So it's got the first volumes of three different series for this age group. So we've got Cupcake Diaries, Sprinkle Sundays and Donut Dreams. Nice way to um, let the kids sort of test the series and see which ones they want to continue with. So Trouble Town, um, Squirrel Do Bad is one of our lead titles. Again, we have simultaneous trade hardcover. It's a 75,000 copy first print. Um, this is a new series from your best-selling creator of Timmy Failure and also the Pearls Before Swine comic collection. So this is a, sort of a comic book style. It's a, sort of a town that's reminiscent of Richard Scarry, has very quirky humor that will appeal to adults as well. And it's just filled with classic childhood themes. So very sort of Calvin and Hobbes like as well. Uh, Barb the Last Berserker is another lead tile. This is a 100,000 copy first print. We also have a six copy signed carton pack on the display promo. Um, this one they describe as She-Ra and the Princess of Power meets Dogman. Um, and this is a berserker who uses her brain and her brawn. It's filled with uh, silly, more than scary monsters. Fantastic illustrations and we have a major marketing campaign to promote. Now we're into the regular middle grade novels. Um, Out of My Heart is our lead title. This is a half a million copy first print. Um, it has moved to November 9th, so you might have something different on your order forms. Uh, but this of course is the stunning sequel to the award winner Out of My Mind. This is about a girl with cerebral palsy who's learning to communicate and be appreciated by the other people in her life. Um, in this one, she gets a communication board and she's at summer camp and it's got classic things like horses and friendship stories and all the rest. Again, it's just a stunning, beautiful novel that will get phenomenal attention. And of course, for this one, we've got uh, two options. We've got a nine copy signed solid floor display or a 20 copy signed solid carton pack for 50% off. This is a hardcover box set for the holidays. Frankie and Bug by Gail Foreman. Again, this is a huge release for us. Um, she's a best-selling author of teen novels. This is her middle grade debut. Uh, this is set in 1980s California. It's a powerful coming of age story about being all about being a good friend while your worldview is changing. Um, it also deals with a lot of issues about LGBTQ and trans rights um, and also covers the AIDS crisis. So it has a lot in here. It's super readable, it's super sweet and super charming and uh, it's gonna get phenomenal attention. Uh, print run is 150,000 copy first print and massive marketing campaign. This one we've got a six copy um, signed solid carton with easel. Um, a Spy School at Sea, of course, is the uh, ninth in the best-selling series. This is a 250,000 copy first print. Um, these have just been doing so well. Um, just to let you know that Stuart Gibbs is a new series starting in spring 2022. And we're also going to start doing the Spy School books as graphic novels. And we do have a 10 copy signed carton pack with easel. Spy School Revolution is book eight coming in paperback. This is based on the American Revolution. Stunt Boy in the meantime, again, this is a huge release for us. This is a 250,000 copy first print. This is mega star Jason Reynolds, um, who's written middle grade and teen books. Um, this is a graphic novel, um, hilarious, um, sorry, I thought I had illustrations. Hilarious, hopeful and action packed novel about the greatest young superhero you've never heard of. Um, he's also having to cope with issues around uh, divorce, growing up and facing his fears. It's gonna get tons of attention. Um, and again, nine copies solid floor display for 50% discount. Uh, the List of Unspeakable Fears is a 30,000 copy first print. This has been described as the war that saved my life meets Coraline. So this is a captivating blend of history, historical fiction, folklore, and ghost stories, all about the typhoid epidemic. Very cool cover. Also deals with um, 
anxiety and prejudice, which I think is uh, around health issues, which I think is a very timely issue. Once Upon a Camel, again, this is a book that could win awards. It's Kathy Appelt, who's already won every award you can win for children's literature. Um, this has been described as the one and only Ivan with a camel, um, about a camel who transports two baby birds through the desert. It's a, a fundamentally a story about storytelling and its power. It will have illustrations. Hilary McKay is one of my favorite writers. Uh, the Swallows Fight is about uh, four young lives that are changed by World War II. Um, so it's about war and its aftermath by a, a master storyteller. It has multiple points of view. One Kid's Trash, Jamie Sumner is a rising star on our list. As uh, you might remember, tune it out and roll with it. Um, this is about a boy trying to fit in at his new school by um, his talents in garbology or reading other people's trash. Um, it's also a father-son story. It's also a school set story. So it has lots of things going for it. And then Tune It Out is coming in trade paperback. This is a 50,000 copy first print. This is ideal for fans of Wonder or Fish in a Tree. This is about a girl with sensory processing disorder who's trying to find her own voice and uh, um, deal with being differently abled. Rules for Vampires. Um, this is a British author. This is a uh, very imaginative world of vampires, ghosts, and talking spiders. Um, it has a cool metallic effect on the cover. So it's a, a fun escapist read that's basically about friendship and learning to fit in. This is the second in the Strange Worlds Travel Agency series. So this is the uh, travel agency where every suitcase you open takes you on a different adventure. Um, Infestation is also the second in the Whispering Pines series. Uh, this was a bit of a sleeper hit for us, the first one. Um, so this is, I would call them like Stranger Things meets the X-Files. And here is Whispering Pines, the first one in trade paperback. So again, I just, this one did really well for us in hardcover. Uh, the Great Ghost Hoax is the second in the series. Um, this is even funnier than the first one, which was The Great Pet Heist. Uh, this is uh, the pets in an apartment complex doing sort of, uh, uh, sort of um, Ocean's Eleven type activities. Um, and this time they're hunting down a ghost. And it has uh, illustrations throughout black and white. Tangled Up in Luck, this is the first in a new series. These are fun, twisty mysteries with two uh, frenemies who are paired together on a class project and then end up solving mysteries together. It has a very lemony, snicket-like narrator. And apparently the series does celebrate libraries. 13th Hour is a 25,000 copy first print. This is perfect for fans of Roald Dahl or Tim Burton. Uh, they said, think Blackthorn Key with a magical pocket watch. Um, main message is about how art is power. It's basically a classic portal fantasy. Uh, the Midnight Market, uh, this is another author we're hoping to build. Um, her previous series was, was the Mrs. Smith Spy School for Girls. Um, Lola Benko is more like an Indiana Jones type read with a girl protagonist. This is book two in hardcover and then book one in paperback. Uh, welcome to the du welcome to Dweeb Club. This is a 30,000 copy first print. This is a breezy read that's um, ideal for reluctant readers. It's about uh, navigating seventh grade and it has a bit of a sci-fi twist. So they sort of said it was Back to the Future meets Gordon Corman. Uh, this is coming in paperback. This is ideal for fans of the Book Scavenger series. This is a boy who's attempting to rewrite his aunt's um, kids book to make it more interesting. And uh, My Life in the Fish Tank, um, she's a real rising star on our list. This is now in trade paperback. This is a, a powerful story about learning how to grow, change, and survive. It deals with uh, bipolar disorder and other mental illnesses. Attack of the Killer Komodos, this is book two in hardcover. And then we have book one in paperback, The Mutant Mushroom Takeover. Um, this one has been described as Stranger Things Meets Holes. So the mutant mushroom takeover is about a mutant fungus that threatens the town and the, the kids who have to solve the situation. So it is a good sort of strong STEM mystery, I guess. 
Uh, Katarina Ballerina is the second in the series. Uh, first one got starred reviews. This is uh, written by a New York City ballet principal dancer and actor Kyle Harris. So they got a lot of publicity for the first one. These are sweet reads about pursuing your dreams. Frindle, this is the 25th anniversary edition. This is um, going to get the special treatment like we gave to Benicula and Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. Um, they're going for a plastic look to make it look like the top of a big pen. And then of course, it also has some gold sequin details and it will have some bonus material. Uh, this is now in paperback. Our cover was published by Shadow Mountain Press. So this is the fourth in the series, perfect for Fablehaven fans. And again, our best-selling series now in paperback. This is book six. Uh, just beyond the very far north, um, this is a Canadian author. This is the second in the series. First one got starred reviews. Um, these are super sweet with illustrations. Again, I would compare it to Winnie the Pooh. And Saucy is coming in paperback. Uh, Multi-award winning author, Cynthia Karuhata, um, ideal for fans of Charlotte's Web. It is a story about learning to stand up for what's right. And again, has some really cute illustrations. Muffled is in paperback. This is a young girl learning how to cope with her noise sensitivity um, and learn how to step outside of her comfort zone. So this is perfect for fans of El Defo or Wonder. Pepper's Rules, this is now in paperback. This is um, an amateur sleuth who's also dealing with her um, burgeoning feelings for other girls. So it has a very uh, light um, age appropriate LGBTQ content. Sky Song, this is a best-selling Scottish author. This is epic fantasy adventure. It was a massive bestseller in um, the UK. Um, this is a cursed girl and a young inventor joining forces to bring down a wicked queen. Uh, then again, the best-selling series, classic fantasy. Uh, this one has continues the saga, has bonus content. And this is the fifth and final in the uh, Revenge of Magic series. Box set. Bye Bye Blue Creek. This is the follow-up to The Size of Truth, though it can be read as a standalone. And this is uh, Sam preparing to leave home for the first time. So it's kind of a wacky out there read, but it's full of a lot of heart. Andrew Smith is sort of known for being a little surrealist. Kenny in the Book of Beasts. This is the sequel to the Caldecott honor winner, Kenny and the Dragon. Uh, it's filled with witches, spells and all great stuff. And again, has really beautiful illustrations throughout. So the James Howe, um, the Misfits, this uh, four book series is being repackaged. These are actually the old jackets. So this is not what they're gonna look like. This is what you remember. And these ones, of course, all deal with bullying and name calling, which continue to be important topics in the classroom. And then we do have a box set with the new covers. Uh, these again, this is a classic series that they've been reissuing. That is book nine and book 10, again, simultaneous editions. A Dork Diaries box set for the Christmas season. This is a middle grade nonfiction biography. This is uh, by Misty Copeland, the principal dancer of New York City Ballet, and she's basically looking at her influences to her career. It's gorgeously illustrated, has a very sort of rebel girls look to it. And then uh, this is the fourth in the Make by Hand series. So this is how to make a guitar. It's good for the maker movement. It's, it's good sort of um, uh, illustrated middle grade for that sort of reluctant reader. Uh, the Impossible First, this is a young reader's edition of a best-selling adult book. This vividly recounts his 54-day journey solo across Antarctica and has color and black and white photos it's for 10 and up. We're now into the teen stuff. Um, so this is uh, the highly anticipated sequel to um, the award-winning Aristotle and Dante. This is a uh, achingly romantic same-sex romance, um, does deal with the raising specter of the AIDS crisis. 
will get reviewed everywhere. Print Run is 250,000 copies. And again, we have two displays. We have the 12 copy signed floor display or a 12 copy signed carton pack. Uh, then this is a hardcover box set. Vespertine is a lead title. Uh, this is the first in a duology. This is the best-selling author of Sorcery of Thorns and Enchantment of Ravens. Uh, this is a teen girl with mythic abilities who must defend the world against spirits. Gorgeous, stunning cover. Um, as I said, rising star, expect a lot of review attention. She's, we're sort of hailing her as our next Cassandra Clare. For All Time is a 75,000 copy first print. This has uh, been described as the sun is also a star meets Outlander. Uh, this is two teens reliving their tragic love story over and over again um, until they un uncover how to change their fate. So they're comparing this to Rachel Lippincott, um, but it is a historical romance set in different eras. The Jasmine Project, this is uh, Jenny Hahn meets The Bachelorette. This is about an adopted girl whose family tries to set her up with multiple boys. So this sort of deals with themes of self-love and also a blended family. Starling, I love this cover. Um, they call this sort of an enchanted romance um, in the same vein as Edward Scissorhands um, or, or The Shape of Water. So this is a forbidden romance. It's about a love triangle. It's told in beautiful prose and multiple points of view. When We Were Them, this is a 30,000 copy first print. Um, this is about lifelong friendships and who we choose to be when we're alone. Um, there is a mystery element, definitely coming of age elements. Also has a mother-daughter relationship and a swoon-worthy romance. Human Girls Guide to Teen Tomorrow. This is a sleeper hit for us. This is now coming in trade paperback. Um, this was chosen as a Reese Witherspoon Teen Book Club pick. And this is a charming heartfelt story about a Miami girl who unexpectedly finds love in a small English town. As if on cue, this would be compared to Morgan Matson. Uh, this is a classic romantic comedy about a theater geek meeting a music geek. It's a clean teen romance, 30,000 copy first print. Last words we said, another 30,000 copy first print. This is a poignant romance, but when your first love is also your best friend, it also has strong Jewish representation. Our Violent Ends, this is book two in the series. These, the, these Violent Delights has been a huge bestseller for us. Um, this print run is 100,000 copies. This is like a retelling of Romeo and Juliet set in 1920s Shanghai. Incredible world building, incredibly atmospheric. We've actually, we we're supposed to do the pa trade paperback of These Violent Delights this fall. We've decided to push it to the new year to let this one stand on its own and sell. Um, that's how uh, successful it has been. So just be aware, you can still order these Violent Delights here, but it's not coming out until March of spring 2022. And then we do have a hardcover um, box set for the holidays. A Rush of Wings, this is a Canadian author from the Niagara region. This is set in the Scottish Highlands. Um, they sort of compare this to the Wild Swan's fairy tale. And it's a, an empowering witchy fantasy very atmospheric. The Witch Haven, this is a 40,000 copy first print. We won this one at auction. This is about an all-female academy of witches um, who are thrown into this battle in Manhattan against a coven of warlocks. Uh, so it is set at turn of the century New York. Again, very sort of atmospheric world building, cool foil cover. They called it Dickensian. Storm the Earth, this is uh, now book two in trade paperback, follow up to Shatter the Sky. This is an LGBTQ fantasy. Book one was an indie next pick, perfect for fans of Margaret Robertson. This is another huge title for us, Roxy. Uh, so this is your best-selling team that brought you dry. Um, this is a riveting thriller that explores the opioid crisis. Um, it, it's a play on Greek gods. The gods are actually the drugs and they're toying with us. So it's a really unique sort of knockout approach to the opioid crisis. We'll get a lot of reviews. 
Um, I, I might have presented these in the, in the summer list as well, but we're repackaging the Unwind books. There's five books in this series. Uh, these again are not the covers. They're going to um, blend together so that all five books create an image, a single image. Uh, just be aware that there is a movie in the works and it is a phenomenal series. This last one, Unbound, is actually a short story set in that world. And then we do have a box set, five volumes. Uh, the Bones of Ruin, uh, Sarah Raleigh again is a Canadian author from Southern Ontario. This is the first in a new series. Uh, print run is 30,000 copies. Um, this is a historical fantasy trilogy set in 1880s London about a tightrope walker um, who cannot die. Um, and she become, becomes embroiled in this secret society. They've compared this to Legend Born. She Who Rides the Storm is a 30,000 copy first print. This is high epic teen fantasy. This is the first in a duology. And this is a high stakes heist of the tomb of an ancient shapeshifter. Cassandra Clare, this is now in trade paperback. This is a half a million copy first print. This is the first in the series that's set in the era of Downton Abbey. And then this is book two in the series that she's writing with Wesley Chu. This is a shadow hunter novel. Rent a Boyfriend is coming in paperback. Um, I would say this is like an Amy Tan for the YA market. This is sort of an incisive rom-com about a college student who hires a fake boyfriend to appease her very traditional parents. And then of course they fall in love. All This Time, this is a bestseller. This is coming in paperback, 150,000 copy first print. Uh, this is your mega bestselling co-author of Five Feet Apart. And this is about a perfect couple in the aftermath of a car crash. Great read. Daughters of Jubilation is historical fantasy. Uh, this is a black teen who finds her place among a family of women gifted with magical abilities set in the Jim Crow South, got starred reviews. Recommended for you, this is uh, again, sort of uh, Jenny Han meets uh, You've Got Mail. This is set in a bookstore, it's a classic rom-com and also has Jewish representation. Alison McGee, multi-award winning author. This is a story about friendship as it's affected by uh, one of the friends being sucked into a cult. Um, cults seem to be a very popular topic with teens these days for whatever reason. Lost Roads, this is the second in the Broken Lands zombie trilogy. This is your best-selling author of Rotten Ruin that was made into a movie. Displaced, this is now in paperback. This is a gripping story about two Syrian refugees trying to make a living on the streets of Beirut. So it's about life in a war zone. He's also written about 80 books. Uh, Those Who Pray is a thriller, again, that deals with cults. Apparently has a very satisfying twist ending. Magic Dark and Strange is a Canadian author. Um, this is historical fantasy. They described it as the Bone Witch meets Sherlock Holmes um, about a girl with the ability to raise the dead. I've also compared it to Kelly Armstrong. And the Nemesis is the third and final in the Diabolic Trilogy. This is about uh, humans caged and raised as weapons. I read the first one and loved it. I haven't read the other two. It was very cool. And this is um, a trade paperback box set for holidays. Lies Like Poison, like poison. sorry. This is a, an electrifying twisted thriller about a strange friends who reunite when someone commits the crime they imagined when they were kids. Um, does include a queer romance and a trans character. Uh, these have actually done really well for us. This is a steamy romance with a mystery element, um, has dual points of view and also um, discusses post-traumatic stress. And then I'm pretty sure I did mention these on the summer list as well. They're just repackaging Scott Westerfeld. There is a movie in the works. These are not the covers, these are the old covers. Hmm. And a box set. Uh, this is a omnibus edition. So again, one of our best-selling backlist series. Um, this has White Cat, Red Glove, and Black Heart. This is about a curse worker with the ability to change emotions. Uh, Canadian author, box set. These are romances, rom-coms again. Uh, the Love and Paperback Collection. Again, this is um, three trade paperback box sets. These are romances set in Greece, Italy, and Ireland. 
The other talk is another big title for us. It's 100,000 copy first print. Brendan Keeley is a very well-reviewed author. Um, he's basically starting the conversation with white kids about race and white privilege. So it's the, it's the same talk that black kids get, but to white kids. Um, they're comparing it to white fragility, but for teens. Um, just expect a lot of review attention. When can we go back to America? This is a big book. Um, this is, uh, they say there's adult crossover attention. This is a visceral heart-wrenching read that looks at um, Japanese internment camps during World War II. And it is from the perspective of kids during the era. Tiny Dancer, this is the follow-up to the award-winning graphic memoir to dance. Um, the whole story is told in these beautiful sort of purple toned illustrations, again, full graphic novel throughout. Uh, we've sold 60,000 copies of the first one. And this is about what happens when you give up on the dream and you don't become the dancer and how does life go on? A code name Badass. Um, this is like a female James Bond story, true story. So good uh, YA nonfiction. And then these are our color ready to reads, which have done quite nicely. And then you get into your basic ready to reads. I don't even have very much time left and I haven't even started the distributed lines. Anyways, all this is straightforward. You guys can do this on your own, all the ready to reads and the um, Simon Spotlight stuff, which is your eight by eights and licensed tie-ins. There's a lot of this stuff. Okay, so just we'll do at least five minutes with the distributed lines. Um, starting off with the Rebel Girls stuff, of course, you know, these packages are phenomenal. Um, they have now launched a podcast, they're doing apparel and toys, and uh, they have TV and film projects coming. So they're just going to be even bigger than ever. Um, these, of course, are stories about uh, pioneering Black women with being still incredible uh, production values. It's 125,000 copy first print. Uh, Rebel Girls Champions, this celebrates 25 female athletes. Again, the stories are told in fairy tale form. And then this is a good stocking stuffer. This is uh, like an activity book to put you in the mindset of different uh, Rebel Girls and how would you react in their situation. We have some box sets. The box sets are the distributed line box sets are not on the promotion. It's just the fully owned box sets. These, of course, are the best-selling series. Big Night Aloha was on an add-on sheet, so you might have already ordered it. So yeah, I mean, these are all pretty straightforward. Um, most of these are series that have done well in the past. A lot of them are full color graphic. Um, Happy Monster is an original trade paperback. It was a, a uh, they made a lot of money on Kickstarter for this. It's a teen graphic novel that's manga inspired. And it's about a girl with surprising new powers with um, who's mistaken as a monster. So it deals with embracing yourself as you are and dealing with prejudice. This is a picture book, very sweet about trying to find a place to be alone. So I think I'm going to have to just let you guys go through the rest of the distributed lines on your own. Um, as I said, I have gone through and chosen the ones that I think have the best potential. If you have any questions, um, please let me know. Um, this one, Sweet People Are Everywhere is Alice Walker. So it's going to be an absolutely stunning picture book um, about inclusivity again, so very timely. The illustrations are stunning. There's also, um, there's a really cool stuff from Arctis Press, which I'd like you to make sure you pay attention to. It comes up later in the catalog. Um, but there's a, hang on, I should show you what it is. I've got time. All the North South, of course, is beautiful stuff. 
Uh, sorry, you guys, this isn't very helpful, but this is, at least it gives you an idea that there's a lot still to look at. Oh, I like this one too, Everything Dies. Uh, so this is a hardcover, but it looks at um, how people deal with death and grief around the world and in different traditions, fully illustrated throughout. Tries to take the, uh, the anxiety out of death. Just gorgeous. Um, the other one I really want to show you is kind of late in the catalog. It's going to show up eventually. Ah, this one, Memento Monstrum. So this is a fairly uh, thick book. It's like 200 pages um, and it's in like Dracula's lair. It's already been a bestseller in Germany. Very cool illustrations coming out for Halloween. And then this one also from Arctis, All the Colors of Life. Again, it's almost 200 pages. The illustrations are stunning. Um, and it's all about the things that we have to be grateful for in life. It's a perfect gift. Um, and again, reprints are going to be hard before Christmas. So I would just get in as many as you can up front. And also from Arctis, The Rot, which is the follow-up to Odin's Child, which has been an international bestseller. Um, and this is a, a, a Norwegian epic fantasy. So I would I'd highly recommend all three of those. Anyway, as far as the rest of the list, please reach out if you need more help. Otherwise, you're uh, on your own. And uh, let me know if you need anything. <laughs>